Before we get started today, I just wanted to give a huge thanks to the people that watched, liked and commented on my last video. It did a crazy number of views for a small channel like mine, so I'm really grateful. And to be honest, it's pushing me on to want to do more stuff on my YouTube channel, so thank you very much. Also a disclaimer for today, I'm not a colorist by profession. My opinions should be treated as just that. They're born from a few years now working with the camera and trying to introduce some objectivity into my work with the colours by using a colour chart. That said, there are a few fishy things going on with the GH5's Cine D profile in my opinion. So let's have a look about how we can work around those. So Cine Like D is a flatter profile coming out of the GH5, designed to give you a bit more flexibility in post to be able to push the colours and also maybe give you a bit more dynamic range than the standard profiles. It's a really popular profile and in fact I go on to recommend it in my GH5 course but it does need some work and a bit of attention to get it looking good. So that's the purpose of this video. So what we're talking about here is colour correction rather than grading. It's all about getting that footage to a neutral starting position from which you can build and apply your creative looks. So the correction stage before you go on to grade involves things like correcting the white balance, looking at your exposure and doing any colour space transformations that you need to do according to whatever your camera's shooting. And that's kind of where this video and this free look comes into the equation. We don't need to do a colour space transformation as if it was shot in log, but there are a few tweaks I think we can make to improve on Cine Light D. So my biggest issue with Cine D is in the colour rendition in the midtones, and that's where the skin tones live, so that's obviously a super important area. The skin tones get a weird cast to them in my opinion and people can look sickly. Let's have a look at a few examples. Just have a look at these gross skin tones. They're all yellowy and really lacking life. They look really sick. This is basically raw footage where the exposure has been corrected and it's white balanced, but the skin tones still look really yellow and sickly. And obviously those skin tones are gonna carry forward through the rest of your grade, whether you're applying LUTs or making other changes, you'll have those skin tones as a base. So a really popular solution to this is to use a paid look by Paul Leeming, and he calls it the Leeming Look 1, or the Leeming Look Pro as it's now known. Now he's updated his look a few times, but I know of some users, me included, that actually prefer one of the older versions of his LUTs. So now the LUTs expect every footage to be exposed to the right. So he's baked into his look a correction to bring the exposure down, and this is what the latest versions of his look look like. So that is the raw footage straight out of camera. And that is with his LUT applied. So you can really see how it's attacked the exposure there to bring it down. What you can do, and this is what he recommends, is then add a further curve to bring up the shadows and the mids if you didn't actually shoot it according to the ETTR principles. And it helps, but whether the curve is wrong or I need to tweak that a little bit, it doesn't look right at all once I've done that. So that might be user error on my part, but this is already a lot more hassle than it is just to fix Cine D, I think, straight out of camera. Here's a shot with the latest Leeming Look Pro from a few weeks ago applied, which I think has actually worked out quite well. But that's before and that's after. You can see a bit more redness in the skin tone, it looks a bit more natural. So I think that is better. That said, I am seeing a few issues from this latest Leeming look, and now I'm not blaming the look for this, it might be user error, but let me show you what I mean. So let's take this shot here. First of all, I'm adding the change here to bring down saturation a little bit. Then if we add the Leeming Look Pro LUT, we can see the exposure has been brought down. Um, so then I've got the curve here to correct that by bringing up the shadows. Now, if we apply all of that, we get this. And to my eye, we're getting a bit of funky greenness around here, right next to the, the reds. So if we go back to what the camera shot and we just add saturation, which is what this is doing here. So I've really bumped up the saturation. Obviously, this is beyond what you would use, but just to illustrate the point, the green red harshness that the Leeming Look showed us isn't really that apparent. Now, I'm not saying that's the fault of the look, that might be user error, um, but that for me is a bit of an issue. And lastly, for the Leeming stuff, here's a shot which did work out really well. So this was shot more according to an exposed to the right principle, which is what the look expects. That's done a really good job of bringing this overexposed footage down to a more normal baseline. So I would say that the Leeming look stuff will probably work if you stick to it. You shoot their settings, um, 
per the book and you follow all the instructions, I'm sure it will work. But that said, I wanted to create my own. So I've made this look that I'm giving away today and it's been based on a few years worth of footage shot with the GH5. And I've also tried to get objective about it and use a color chart so it's not just down to my eye and my monitor, etc. This one's been designed specifically for the settings given in my course, which is these CineD settings. Now don't forget this isn't supposed to be a finished grade where, with an artistic look to it. This is simply just to correct the footage to a neutral baseline. And you can see the humans look like humans, which I find helps. So just to show you what my look has done, on the top layer here we've got the original straight out of camera footage and then underneath which I'll flip to we've got my look applied. So here is the original and turning that off there it is with my correction look so the skin tone looks much more normal. Next shot here you can see all the yellowness in the skin tones here with a bit more life to it. There's the original shot which looks very yellow and a bit sickly to my eye and there's the one with my corrective look applied. And now I'm not saying my look's better than Paul Leeming's, but if you are looking for an alternative, I do think this improves Cine D. That said, it's worth bearing in mind his look is 15 euros for just the Cine D version. So the second look that I'm giving away for free in this package has got that correction layer first of all, and then I've got a nice contrast curve there and some saturation added to it as well to give you a more rounded and balanced look, which I've called neutral. This could be a one click step to fixing your Cine D footage and giving it some contrast and saturation back to make it look a bit more finished if all you wanted was more of a neutral kind of natural look. If you plan on using other looks and doing a bit more of a grade to your Cine D footage, I'd recommend starting with just the correction and then building your grade from there. And then thanks to starting off with the correction, you'll have the benefit of your grade having people that look like people. So to get going with this yourself, you need to go to the link below where you can download these looks for free. In the folder, there's a PDF with some blurb with the camera settings and a brief explanation of what the two looks are and how to use them. And of course, the two looks themselves. So let me show you how to use them once you've downloaded them. Step one is to correct the black point and move your highlights to taste. So in Final Cut Pro, I would go on to color wheels, and I'd bring the shadows down to somewhere between zero and five IRE here on the waveform. And I would adjust highlights to taste. In this case, uh, they're clipping, so I'll leave them about there. And that's step one. Step two is to fix your white balance. Or should I say, make sure it's still correct because obviously you set the white balance in camera before you got to this stage, so you know it's good. Ideally, you want to have some neutral gray in your scene so that you can isolate that and see if it's got a color tinge to it. So that's why I recommend if you've got a gray card, you take a little shot of that before you start shooting your scene. So you've got that to refer to in post. Then in Final Cut, and this will work just as well in Premiere, you can apply a mask to it. If we just cut out the gray parts, and if we check what it looks like on a vector scope, where it's plotting the colors, we can see that Neutral grey would normally be sat in the middle because it's got no colour at all, but in this case, we're heavily leaning to the blue section. So the white balance was off on that shot. So I'll fix that by going back into my colour wheels. And here we've got two tools that we'd use. We've got the tint to push the image either to the magenta or the green side. Um, in this case, that's not really helping us because magenta's up there, green's down here actually we need to be going over this way so i'll reset that and the second slider that we've got is temperature so we can cool that down which obviously pushes this more to the blue side or we can warm it up to push us more to the yellow side and about there we've got our gray stuff right in the middle of the chart so it's got no color tinge to it that should look pretty balanced now if we take off the mask i can see that's 
a much healthier image. So if we take off that color wheel, we can see it's gone from all blue and cold to a more of a balanced shot. Step three is to add the look itself. So on Final Cut Pro, you would go to the color tab of the effects panel, add custom look, and then go and find the look from this drop down menu. Here's the before and after obviously of that look. So that's before where my skin is all yellow and sick and that's it with a bit more life to it. Any look that you apply, you should always reassess your image. You can look for added contrast. You could go for some saturation in there. Um, you could then recheck your white balance if you've messed around with saturation. So all those things are good practice and then you can apply your grade on top of that. And that's it, easy as pie, that's all there is to it. So happy downloading, get to shooting some awesome footage and let me know how you get on. Thanks for watching this one. In the next one, I'll be doing the same again for a natural profile. And I did promise a video about the GH Alex look, which I kicked into some medium long grass. I have been working on that, that will follow eventually. Um, but the next one will be about the natural profile.